Welcome to Canada! So here are your newcomer checklists. So first on your newcomer checklist would be obtaining a phone number. So if you've been watching my previous videos, you will know that my friend and I have secured our apartment before we even arrived in Canada. And along with us securing our apartment, we also made sure that we purchase a SIM card, a prepaid SIM card, and have it delivered on our apartment. I'm not the expert in terms of a phone plan and uh, those kind of stuff, but I'm here to share my experience with you. If it is your first time activating a SIM card or obtaining a number, I think the major difference between buying a SIM card in my home country, the Philippines, and here in Canada is that here you can actually choose your own number. My friend and I eventually figured that um, keeping a prepaid number or a prepaid SIM card will not work because if here if you don't have credit your number would not work and like back home even though your sim card doesn't have any credit for a particular uh, period i believe people can still call you people can still text you when we went to the service provider store in one of the malls we asked them if they have a specific plan for international students but we were told that at that moment, I'm not really sure if they have changed their policies now that they have none and we have to undergo the regular uh, route in obtaining a postpaid plan. So one of the requirements they asked us to provide was a credit history. Since we were new, uh, we cannot provide any credit history because we do not have any credits yet. and. Um, they also ask us if you have relatives here because uh, relatives can actually add you to their plan. So we told the service provider that we, have, we don't have those that they're asking for. So we had to leave the store and find a different way of obtaining a postpaid plan. So we didn't really know what to do. We already have our prepaid number, but we cannot go change it to a postpaid. And after we finish processing our bank accounts, I will share that with you later on this video, my friend and I passed by a Best Buy store because they have a promotion, so we just want to check it out. And we went to their phone section. We spoke to a representative and he assisted us. We told him that this is our current situation we are newcomers in Canada and we are international students and he told us that what he needs from us is our passport or identification ID, our proof of address, and our certificates, our permits, and visas. So we hand over those documents to the representative and we filled out the papers but before our documents get approved, um, he told us, the representative told us that he has to do a credit check. So luckily for us, we already have uh, set up our bank accounts and I uh, actually have a GIC account. So I already have funds on my bank. And after a few seconds, not even minutes, we were told that our application got approved. So I'm not really sure how and why it's approved because we do not have any credit history but i feel like having an account a bank account with funds really help us to have or to set up our own um phone plan <laughs> uh, additionally during that change um we changed networks as well so when that happened we mentioned to the representative or the sales personnel that uh, we already have our numbers with us and he told us that there is nothing to worry about we can transfer I forgot the actual term but we can transfer 
your number from one network to another. So even though we changed networks, we did not really had to change our numbers. Second on our list would be opening a bank account. Of course, we need our funds, right? So as mentioned earlier, I set up my GAC account back in the Philippines. So when I went here, all I had to do was to book my appointment and follow the instructions sent to me by the bank. The usual documents that the bank would ask you of would be a proof of GIC, so if you open your GIC account. Proof of identification, I usually bring my passport with me when I was processing all these um, documents. And another uh, ID just in case. So I have my driver's license, Philippine driver's license with me as well. Uh, they would also ask you of your proof of address for some mails and uh, your phone number and email address. So other uh, information that they would ask you would be your SIN, S-I-N account. When I set up my bank account here, I do not have my S-I-N yet. So I just mentioned it to my agent and my agent told me that I can just call them or visit the bank if I have already obtained my uh, SAN so that they can release my um, credit card. Unlike in the Philippines, when you open a bank account, it is automatically a savings account. Here, it will be a checking account. So it is in the checking account that your grocery bills or your debit, whatever you do with your debit card or ATM card, would be transacted so savings account is where you earn your interest it is not really mandatory that you open a savings account but personally i prefer to have a separate checking account from a savings account just so that i don't go overboard with my budget <laughs> the card that was issued to me after i finished my paperwork was a blank debit card so my bank said that if you want a card that has a name on it then it will be requested and will be sent to your address after 7 to 10 working days if you'd like to know more about opening a GAC account or any bank related um, questions especially regarding international students I would suggest that you speak to a bank representative since they are the expert on that particular matter. Moving on on the checklist, number three would be applying for your SIN or Social Identification Number. I know some people who did their SIN by walking in, but I booked mine online. After two days, I received a call from a representative. So that representative told me the available dates for appointment and I did my booking through that. My friend and I lived around downtown so uh, the representative told us that we should process our SIN at Harry Hayes. And when we went there during our appointment date, there was no queue. Probably because it was early in the morning, first hour, just around 8 o'clock. And it took us about uh, less than an hour to finish our application. So the documents that we brought were our study permit, our passport. I also brought my driver's license with me and proof of address. If you have any other documents, then it is advisable that you bring those as well because the agent might also request for some supporting documents. Anyhow, I will put the link, the complete list of the stuff that you should bring in processing all these on the description. So one important thing that the agent told us is SIM is a very private number. You should not disclose it with anyone except for your bank and for your uh, employers. 
SIN is connected to your taxes and benefits. That is why you have to ensure to keep it private. We were told previously that with SIN, you will be given a card, but after a lot of loss complaints, they are just issuing a paper with your SIN number. And that paper will be issued to you as soon as you finish your SIN processing. Another important document or identification that you need to process right away as soon as you get here in Alberta would be your Alberta Health ID. So Alberta Health ID, I process it in a licensing company at the Bow Valley Square, which is around First Street. Registering for Alberta Health is necessary so you can have access to physicians, doctors, vaccines, immunizations, hospital services, um, medical laboratories, and other hospital or health-related services. I am not really sure if it got across uh, Canada, but in Alberta, per se, as far as I know, as soon as you land, you are eligible to apply for your Alberta Health. The documents that you will need for Alberta Health would be your student permit, your proof of address, and your identification. Before you leave the registry, you will be issued a number and your actual Alberta Health card will be delivered to you on your mailing address. Since I am a female along with my ID, I also receive an invitation for a pap test. And at first, I wanted to dodge that. <laughs> I didn't want to do it. But I was sent a reminder that I need to do my tap. So I did. But before I do that, I had to book for my family doctor. So here, whatever you do, you will be directed to your family doctor. So as soon as you get your Alberta Health card, Call the number and then you will be asked like where your location is, where you live and they will make some suggestions on the nearest um, clinic. So once you have your clinic of your choosing, you can give that clinic a call and they can assist you. Look for your family doctor. I also used my Alberta Health when I was taking my COVID booster shots. Since you're already at the registry, you can also process your Alberta ID or your driver's license. I didn't get my Alberta ID because I have my driver's license with me. And what I was told is you can only have one ID in Alberta. So it's either you get your Alberta ID or get your driver's license. For the purposes of this video, I will only share my experience in obtaining a driver's license. I do not have my GDL 5 yet, but I had my GDL 7 or learner's uh, license. Before you get your class 5 license or the license that you use to actually drive here in Canada, you have to get your class 7 first or your learner's license. With the learner's license, all you have to do is to pass the written exam. So the written exam is 30 items and you only need to get 25 items correct to pass. To prepare for my class 7 certification, I read the Alberta Health uh, booklet the driver's license booklet and then I also did some practice tests online so um, if you're interested I'm also gonna put those resources on the description you can take the GDL 7 exam as many as you want the only limitation is you can only take one exam per day and you have to pay $17 every time you take the exam in total, I paid for 
$60 to get my GDL 7 license. Moving on on the list, we have our library cards. The closest library to Bow Valley College would be the Central Library. So that is just across the street from the South Campus. You do not really have to bring anything with you when getting your library card. All you have to do is to go to the counter or the information desk and a library representative will assist you. The only thing that you really have to do there is to choose a password and to choose a library card color and that is it. Each library card has an identification number and that number is what you use to access all the facilities and services at the library. It has a credit of $5 and it is renewed uh, monthly. You can use that $5 credit to print important documents like resumes, cover letters, school assignments, and other stuff. You can also scan documents at the library. So aside from printing, scanning, you can also use uh, the computer there and book some study rooms if you wish to have a place to study. The library also offers services to assist newcomers in filing their taxes for the first time and there are also a lot of fun activities at the library every once in a while. Last but not least, on my newcomers checklist is a transit pass. So a transit pass here works different from the Philippines because back home, I'm not really sure now because it has been a while since I was home, is every time you move to a different mode of transportation or even a vehicle, you need to pay a fare. But here, all you need to have is a ticket. And a ticket here, usually if you're purchasing a single ticket, is valid for 90 minutes. So your ticket can be brought online. If you want to buy it online, you have to download the Calgary Transit app. If you don't want to download or to have your ticket on your phone, you can also go to your local shoppers or you can uh, go to the LRT terminals. There will be some ticket booth right there. As mentioned earlier, a single ticket ride here is valid for 90 minutes. So within that 90 minutes, you can ride the train, uh, as much as you want and you can ride a bus as much as you want as long as your ticket is still valid. There is also an option for you to buy a day pass that is valid for almost a whole day and a monthly pass. As a Bow Valley College student, we have a student pass. It is actually recently approved so yay! <laughs> And that is a discounted monthly pass. If you want to know more about that, you can visit our student association office. I will have a separate video detailing on getting around Calgary, so please watch out for that. And that's it for your newcomers checklist. And I'm so glad that you're here in Canada. You are welcome and good luck with processing all your requirements. Thank you so much for all your support, for subscribing. I am very, very grateful and I feel very honored. I'm happy that you find my videos in front of in your school. Anyways, welcome again in Canada. I'm so excited for you. I hope to see you around and I hope to see you on my next video.